Hey guys, welcome back to Fairhammer Videos. I'm already pretty certain you're going to like this one, so here's a sneak peek as to what this stuff does. Did you like that? Yeah, I thought so. If you want to see more, all you need to do is click like, the notification bell, and subscribe to this channel. Then just watch the rest of the video. Before we begin, a quick shout out to all our patrons, I'm going to list their names at the end of the video, but without them, content like this wouldn't exist, so thanks guys. So to use this stuff, a warning straight up. Read the bottle, I'm not going to go through it verbatim, but the important note is this is flammable. I mean, that doesn't surprise me too much, it smells like gasoline, but generally don't use this near a naked flame and don't get it too hot because it can combust. Keep it somewhere safe and out of the reach of kids. Take the proper precautions when using it. It does recommend to use gloves, I didn't, and that's when I learned the second part of the warning, it stains my fingers. I have to do a massive thanks to Instagram user Goblins who got my attention with this stuff back in 2021 and back then me and him were talking about me writing a guide on Fohammer.com and doing this video and then life just got in the way. So here we are now doing that video but he's the one who inspired me and has taught me most of what we stepped through in the first part of this tutorial. So first tip for any new user of this stuff, like any paint you need to shake it but then I also recommend you shake it. And if your arm gets tired, just use your other arm. It feels kind of interesting, almost like somebody else is shaking it. And when you get really good at it, you'll be shaking it while thinking about miniatures. Seriously, get down and buggy with this stuff. So the first thing I did was just throw this stuff down the on a miniature primed in black. You can increase the effect after about 20 minutes to half an hour by adding some drops of water in specific places. However, this tends to cause those areas to turn bright yellow with a really dark ring around the edge. And thanks again to Goblins who noticed that with Vallejo's Rust Wash, you can darken these areas down and tie them back into the rest of the model. Going back and forth with this approach gives you a lot of control and leads to quite a natural result. Moving on, we can use Typhus Corrosion to add some more texture to the model. After all, it's the colour transition between the peaks and the crevices that make this rust effect stand out. So I've applied this carefully to the flattest armour plates on the model. Another tip that I got from Goblins is to base your model initially in Mournfang Brown. On the model I painted earlier, where I missed a section, it would have blended in much easier to Mournfang Brown, whereas the black sticks out like a sore thumb. So once you've got some texture added and it based in the right colour, I just liberally applied the dirty down rust effect all over the model again. For a bit more interest this time, I tried spritzing water through my airbrush, in fact just a notch above off, and this let little droplets form on the surface, which caused very, very tiny specks of yellow to appear on the model. For me, that just adds a little bit of texture interest, but to be honest, I was just playing about with it to see what I could achieve. And that's what's so great about this stuff, it's so much fun to play with. So when you see people use this stuff, you usually see it applied to large things like terrain or vehicles. And that's because out of the bottle, this stuff is really gloopy. So it takes up a lot of the surface detail on smaller models and miniatures. We're gonna need a lot more control. And again, a huge thanks to Goblins who discovered what he's dubbed as the Magic Mix. So the Magic Mix is made of four parts Vallejo Rust Wash, three to four parts dirty down and a couple of drops of water. Have a play with it, but generally add more or less of the dirty down depending on how strong you want the effect to be. This goes down on the model a lot thinner, however the rust effect ends up being a lot more subtle. The good thing is you can just apply multiple coats, so here it is again after two coats of this applied. So far, this is my favourite way to apply it to rank and file miniatures. I think the key to a rust effect is getting some metallic pigment in there. So whilst Goblins recommends Vallejo's metallic black, I don't actually have that, so I just use steel by Darkstar because it was a dark metal colour. I really love this stuff, it dries and almost looks like graphite from a pencil. So here's the results after I followed the tutorials by Goblins. Huh. 
Personally though, my favourite is still very much the one done by applying two rounds of Magic Mix and then dry brushing with Dark Star Steel. So now I've learned everything I could from those tutorials, it's time to start playing on my own. First off using Sterling Mud, which I thought was a crackle effect paint, I started applying this around some of the areas of this cargo container where I thought it would collect and weather heavily, especially around the base where it would pick up a lot of crud and dirt and debris. I then blended that into the smooth areas using some typhus corrosion around the edges. On the other side I used an actual crackle effect paint, which is a ghrelin earth. I watered this down before applying so that I'd get smaller cracks. Again, repeating the process I did on the other side, I just put this in areas where I thought you would get more rust build up. And again, I blended it in using typhus corrosion. Once dry, I painted it all with Mornfang Brown to get that base colour down, but also to try and seal in some of the texture. Then it was just a case of covering the entire thing with neat, dirty down rust. Here it is drying, and here it is with a few water drops added. Metallic dry brush, and yeah, I'm happy with that. But we're not done there. Like anything that's rusty, it's normally been painted in a colour at some point. So I wanted to see how this would work with the chipping medium or this worn effects from AK Interactive. So I just covered the entire thing in worn effects, sprayed my crag blue as a base, added some colour transition to the top and a fade on the sides with Calgar blue, mainly just because I like the idea of ultramarines things getting ruined. But don't tell Nick Mater. And I also went to do the same thing on the Plague Marine using Carrick Stone and Typhon Ash. And with a chipping medium, it's normally just a case of getting it wet, and then once that's soaked through, you can easily brush or scratch away the top level paint to reveal the surface underneath. However, it became very obvious very quick that this just seemed to be bringing up the dirty down rust effect and going back to the base Mornfang Brown. Worse still, it's dragging the dirty down rust paint all over the model, ruining the blue I've just painted. It was at this moment that he knew. He f***ed up. So I figured in for a penny, in for a pound, and just kept brushing away at the blue paint until a good chunk of it was removed. I can always just water down and add some more dirty down rust later, but I just put this to one side and thought I'll leave that for this evening. With the Plague Marine, it was the same deal, but because of the lighter colour, I noticed it a lot more instantly, so I just kept brushing away at this. But I'm not going to be defeated, I'm going to keep playing with this model. I tried a few things. I tried little spots of dirty down and then blending it out with water. I even tried soaking the entire model in water and then letting dirty down just run into the recesses. The issue I had is that when you apply water, the dirty down dries lighter. I ended up having it drying pretty much the same colour as the paint on the model. With a final test thanks to Artisopus's recent video on this product, I cracked it. So apply it neat to the entire model and then using a moist makeup sponge, just remove it from the raised areas and then a few drops of water to highlight some transitions in the darker spots. And here we go, here's that final result. But what happened to the cargo container? Well, I'm pleased to say that in this case, ignorance truly was bliss because I came down the next morning to see this. So yeah, while the worn effects fluid initially removed it from the surface I'd previously painted, it's just re-moistened it again, and overnight it's dried back down to that lovely rust texture and rust colour that we had initially. And yeah, I'm pretty impressed, that is one damn good rust effect. So yeah, I'm really proud of the result we had here and a few happy accidents along the way. This stuff is absolutely amazing. You can chuck out most of your other rust pigments. This is one thing in a bottle. And now I have a few more additions to my slowly growing but mismatching Nurgle army. So that's it guys. Once again, thanks to our patrons who are listed here. 
If you're not one of our patrons already, please consider signing up. There's a link down below. We've got great content for you, like early access. We've got exclusive content. You can vote on what's upcoming, roles on our Discord server, and we even have a monthly giveaway for patrons. And this next one is going to be one of the best things we've ever given away. I've hinted to it heavily in this video, but not said it. Check out my Instagram feed for what it might be, but that's coming very soon. Check out my next video for details. Massive thanks to you just for watching this video. If you did like it, please let me know by hitting that like button down there. And while you're down there, don't forget to hit the notification bell and the subscribe button. You can also comment on the video. Please let me know what your favorite special effect paint is. But until next time, that's been me, that's been this. Fohammer out.